What is a rapist if he doesn't rape? What is a cokehead if he doesn't sniff coke? What is KSI if he doesn't make bad music? What is a pedophile if he has no children to poke? Cause with Malaga, I shine. FIFA 15 is my grind. Like Harry, I never lose my line. Bulgaria asked me to come by. All I had to say was, fuck off, bye. Click the link in the bio to follow me on SoundCloud. This video is not just another career mode episode. It tells a story about an underdog, a chemotherapy patient, and the man's worst enemy, greed. We reach the holiday season on high expectations. Marga on the hunt for Champions League places in La Liga a great Europa League campaign, and a human male actually called Duda wanting to leave the club. We will prepare for a run on another prestigious competition, the Copa del Rey, as Alaves from the division below stand in the first round to face us. Among Brozovic, ahead of our starting CDM Dada, I finally decided to apprehend Guillermo Ochoa of playing in all competitions as I gave Kameni the chance to stop begging for food to start in the first leg of the cup in his first match of the season. N not, not, not this Kameni. All this Kameni knows how to do is induce ear bleedings and boxes of diabetes for children. Inaki Williams pick up an assist for Amrabat's first goal. And what a, f what a fucking assist. Leaving the defender on the, on the floor. On the floor! Do you know how good a pass has to be? to leave a defender on the floor. Our cancer patient strikes again, with a Melasco sending the marker to Jupiter and scoring bottom corner. Psst, hey, hey, FIFA. Psst, FIFA, are you watching FIFA? And by the 25th minute, it was already 3-0 via Camacho's curler. Uh, but more of him later on the video. Another Alaves defender was left on the floor. Yeah, maybe it's just an Alaves problem, not our players producing match skills. It might just be that Alaves are completely brain dead. Luis Alberto finishes the morning with the fourth, pretty much sending us through in the first leg alone. But I'm not trying to create the illusion that it wasn't a perfect match because Inaki Williams did miss this. If you do this again, I will personally deport you back to Ghana, you spastic chimpanzee. I chose the second leg to be simulated due to complete lack of interest from the player to waste 12 whole minutes of his life playing a game that was made in 2014. Yeah, yeah, uh, we're in the round of 16. The Ripple League group stages were tight. Only three points separated us from Gingump and Malmo, and because we're the protagonists, we would face Estorio Praia, a team already out of the qualification running. But yes, also the same team we didn't beat the first time around and got mugged in the process by Seba. Also the game that made me send this gem to the internet. Designated on what they're doing to Malga as a football club, as an institution. That Just for the whole world to see the acting talent that is behind this face. And Northern Amrabat calls these moments, these important moments in the season, his bitch. He sends a corner bad enough for the keeper to see a chance to catch the ball, but perfectly placed at our centre-back Sanchez's head for first blood in the match. Luis Alberto takes a long shot, and did I mention that Estorio has Rocky Balboa on their team? Rocky Balboa, the fourth, his great-grandson, and he nearly set up an equaliser for them, if only Estorio knew how to score against an empty net. By the way, uh, FIFA, are, are you still watching? Uh, cause, watch this. What the fuck was that? Then you come tell me that he can't win a Ballon d'Or. Suck your dad. The away win in Portugal guaranteed us through the Europa League, and since the last match against Gingump had no effect on our qualification, I simulated. But before we faced them, I sent the team on a bonding trip to a local strip club in Malaga. Good news, uh, the trip increased morale and confidence so the team could comfortably beat Gingump. Bad news, I'm pretty sure that Ivan Tony contracted syphilis after 77 different strippers, according to him, begged him for anal. I'm not saying that you're a sex, a sex offender or anything, but if 77 different women begged for you to fuck them from behind 
on their anus. Now, there's no shame on that. Just say that you're a sex offender and move on. There was also this kid, uh, Rodriguez, who was a left back glazing me for months just to play one game on my email box. And I gave him a chance against La, La Coruña. I, I actually gave him a chance. So let's see how an 18-year-old right back reserve would, would do against fully professionals. This was Rodriguez's last match for Malaga in his career. Now let's finally talk about the league, because the match against Celta Vigo was perhaps the turning point of a whole season. I shifted Luis Alberto to a centre forward and made Orta, by contrast, redundant. I also made Marcel Brozovic to try for the first time in his career playing as a number 10, as an attacking midfielder. Considering he's usually the one to cut off passing lanes and tackle on the pitch, we were destined to fail with this tactic. <laughs> His first two goals for Malaga from attacking midfield. From attacking midfield. Give me the chance to manage Man City and I'll make Pep Guardiola's tactics look like fucking middle school under 12 soccer formations. If it wasn't enough, Williams was suffering from epilepsy with the ball and even he could score. My tactics, gentlemen. I am Jose Mourinho. Oh, oh, oh. Is that not enough for you? The next match against Elche, crossing the box, Luis Alberto scores via a header. Y yes, Luis Alberto, header. The same guy who, whilst in England with Liverpool, was weighing 44 kilos. How is he outpowering anyone in the air? Oh, and that's still not enough for you? Cross from Samuel Casilejo. Luis Alberto, header. Again, I, I repeat, Luis Alberto, header. And the people in my school thought that I would grow up to be a postman. Who's laughing now? Says the fully grown man, sat in his room alone, shouting at a computer game. I hate my life. It's January 1st, 2015, ladies and gentlemen, and the transfer window opened. Two offers came along for our players. In my mind, I think, uh, it must be for Duda, the old scraggly fuck. To my surprise, and eventual demise, it was for one of our starting players. Our very own Rodri with erectile dysfunction, Ignacio Camacho. The offers came in from two different clubs. Valencia, from the same league as us, offered £16 million and straight away, I didn't want to hear it twice, so I rejected the offer. However, the second one, Paris Saint-Germain, offered £23 million, more than double of his market value. And at first glance, I didn't really want to listen. And then, the greed. The greed started acting in me. PSG have a lot of money to spare, and the offer was already respectable enough. But Camacho was 24 years old, probably in his prime, 88 rated with room for improvement in his potential, and on form, one of the best midfielders in La Liga at that current moment. Rarely I talk about him in matches, but whilst Amrabat, Luis Alberto and Williams score up front, Camacho breaks everything and connects to the wingers and midfield for counter-attacks, akin to what, you know, Casemiro would do at Real Madrid in his prime. If he's a good enough player for PSG, in my mind, considering the market of 2015 as well, the least they could offer was £30 million to even make me consider if I should accept. So without much expectation of a response back from PSG, I sent a counteroffer of £35 million to test PSG's true desire to acquire one of the players of the season. As I simulated a win against Almeria, courtesy of our centre-back, Sanchez at the back, I felt like the whole transfer rumour would just die and perish, and we could carry on with the season problem-free. How naive a man could be to doubt the powers of a nation-owned club with infinite money. PSG sent a counter-offer days later, 31 million pounds. At the time, that would be the third biggest signing in PSG's history, even above Thiago Silva and Nicolas Anelka. The greed in me was screaming, ordering me to accept the deal, get the money and run. And with regret in my eyes, I accepted the offer. Ignacio Camacho, nurtured at Malaga and destined to play in World Cups for Spain, will spread his wings and fly to glamorous Paris to play alongside names such as Thiago Silva, Edison Cavani, and Zlatan Ibrahimovic. The deal would not be finalized after a couple of days, meaning the first leg, round of 16, tie against Atletico Madrid, will be the last ever match Camacho plays in the wide blue. In honor his service of class, he will represent the white and the blue at striker 
Lonely at the Top. That win marks the end of an era of Ignacio Camacho, aka the Sergio Busquets that runs, aka the white and Golocante, aka Paul Pogba if he was good, aka Claude Makalele with hair, aka the future father of your kids. And now with 34 million pounds in the bank, I ask myself, what happens now? When really, I should be asking you, you fucking pussy ass bitch. If you would be so kind, friendly, and lovely, uh, write down in the comments signings we can make with the Camacho money. Could either be a replacement for him, a CDM, or even a new position. Just for the love of Talia Ma, not another fucking striker. I'm having to put Luis Alberto there, and even he has been better than all your suggestions. But either way, may Camacho live happily ever after in Paris. Even though no one does, it's Paris. As we proceed forward, keep marching on with our biggest strengths and weapons. Our attacking arsenal spells danger for every team we face. I mean, hell, we beat the MSN Barcelona 4-1. If Real Madrid didn't appeal to the refs, we would have beaten them at home as well. And with the latest cup win, we played and won both matches against Atletico Madrid. We made the Europa League group look like an underage gymnastics competition for little girls. And now the potential to take everything we built to the next level. And it all depends on your choices and recommendations in the comment section in the transfer market. Considering you, as the viewer, the scouts for this team, for this Malaga team. Since, if only I called the shots for these decisions, well, I wouldn't be playing this game anymore. <laughs>